all of you in this very nice atmosphere. The aula doesn't look like how we, you know it. So it's really nicely lighted in a nice uh, atmosphere. Thanks very much for the music. These were our MA students playing music. Um, Uh, Abby, Daniel, Nicolas, and Caroline. And you will hear more of them uh, later in the program as well. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, the song that you heard, actually, when you walked in, was also an ISS song. At least that's where especially the older generation will know it. Uh, and I have to say it's about from um, Mrs. Fassi, and the title is Full in Leila. And what I learned, it's open the path. It's meant like that. So it's a favorite of ISS. And, uh, I think several of you recognize it. Uh, I see Rosal by nodding, so that's good. So very much a warm welcome to you. Uh, I want to mention some people especially. Um, Ed Brinksma, of course, our president of the university, and Annelien Bredenoord as director magnificus. So nice that you just at the last moment decided to come. So uh, very much welcome here. And then, of course, the alumni also. So I would like you to ask, we're going to go back in the past to the palace, Noord Einde, to Hotel Wittebrug, and then to Kortenakade. There's one group, and I already see them, but can you raise your hands? That is the group of alumni who have been here and graduated 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. They were in the palace, Noord Einde. <laughs> so please give them a good applause. And make sure that you talk with them after this meeting and the drinks and things. They have very nice and spicy stories about Palais <laughs> Not Einde. <laughs> then we have also alumni and also staff, I think, who worked. And we have some staff also who worked in the palace. I know that. So it's just, but also staff in Hotel Wittebrug. Welcome. Yeah, Hotel Wittebrug. Who were in Hotel Wittebrug? Okay. Good, 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 good. Thank you. And then, yeah, the rest, I would say, is Cotton Arcade. That's the most recent. <laughs> so that's all of us. So uh, very warm welcome. Um, ISS 70 years old this today. And uh, congratulations to all of us. The theme of this di uh, DS is reconnecting. And especially it's about reconnecting between each other, uh, with each other, with our alumni, with also the people who are attending on the live stream. So it's not only us, but also people in the whole world uh, being here. To meet again uh, after the corona time, after the lockdowns, uh, to meet here in the community and to build our community again. And you're all part of that community. Uh, to reconnect to our partners in the Global South, uh, to the partners in uh, Den Haag, um, and to our colleagues in Erasmus University as well. The pictures that we have of our hands uh, on the windows of the building, and you nicely see that we are shaking hands or reaching out to each other, uh, symbolizes this reconnecting. So after the lockdown, just meeting each other again, reaching out to each other, and um, embracing together actually our whole building at the Corte Nakada. So that feels like that. Actually, also their flags uh, at the Hofvijver. So they will be there for three weeks. They all have the same pictures in it. And please have a look. It's very colorful. Also the same hands reaching out to each other. And we were there last week with a small group of colleagues. And it was almost like it's even a message from ISS Erasmus University to the center, to the city of The Hague, the politic uh, political world, Reconnect, just reconnect and reach out to each other with the hands of different color, different backgrounds, different ways of greeting as well. So the message of ISS reconnecting uh, in the center of the Hague, blowing in the wind. Uh, re reconnecting hands implies meeting each other, uh, listening to each other, talking together in an inclusive way. And in that way, I think it's not only reconnecting to each other or connecting to each other, it's also connecting to ourselves. Because that's the way how you meet each other. And that's, that's why this year I decided to organize this special DS uh, without having the cortege of the professors. So it's not an academic meeting. Um, it's only for this year. 
um, so there's no quotation, but actually if we would come in as professor wearing our gowns, immediately there's the inequality created. And actually this party is really for all of us. Actually, Annaline said something nice just uh, before we uh, came here. It's actually that we feel a bit okay ourselves, and we have to reveal ourselves who we are behind or inside our gown. So that was a nice saying. Reconnecting is also very much about reconnecting to our past and to our future. So the idea is that today, this afternoon, we travel from Paleis Noordeinde to Hotel Wittebrug, to the Kortenakade and to the future. So we really want to move and look f uh, backwards in order to be able to uh, move forwards. Um, and where a major question is as well, okay, 70 years now, so where will we be, who will we be in, let's say, 2032, when we become 80 years old? So that's an intriguing thing to think about. And of course, we also have then to see, well, where are we now? And where are we situa situated in the outside world? And at this moment, the world's in turmoil. Wars and disasters, war in Ukraine, but also many political conflicts in any, many other countries. Inflation, uh, global climate change, flows of people who have to migrate and leave their houses, etc., etc. Also for us at ISS, uh, relevant is the changing approach of the Dutch international cooperation and the Dutch higher education, with more focus on shifting power from the global north to the global south, to equal partnerships, and on decolonizing knowledge and aid, and on citizen science, and on epistemic justice. And I know, and I think, ISS is very well equipped to deal with all these global challenges. We already do actually, and work on that. All our expertise and experiences are in those topics and societal relevant issues. And there's a great passion on all the work that we do. It is, as sometimes is said in Erasmus, it's in our DNA to do research and teaching on societal relevant issues. And in our DNA since 1952. I'm also very happy that the UR 2024 strategy on creating positive societal impact Hence, fits ISS very well, or the other way around. Uh, the ISS strategy also fits the ER 2024 policy very well. As also, we, uh, it's, it fits with the shift in international cooperation and higher education. While we travel through time this afternoon, uh, I'd like to ask you the following. You have a card, you found it on your uh, chair, and a pen. And actually, the question there, you might have read it already, it's okay, where will we move as ISS uh, into the future? How will we move into the future? Say at 2032, 20, uh, when we're 80 years old. So you asked, just write it down, maybe when you think, well, that's a good idea, or when there's some music playing. And then uh, afterwards, there's a ballot box, and you, we uh, put it in there, and we will analyze it and also feedback to you. So thanks a lot for that. Um, the pen you can keep. Then finally, I wish you a splendid afternoon. I wish you an exciting afternoon. Uh, it's very interactive. We have a talk show uh, with very nice uh, interviewees. Um, just enjoy, and I'll come back at the end of uh, the meeting. Thank you very much, and enjoy. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for that beautiful speech, uh, Inga. It is such a pleasure and privilege to gather this afternoon in this room, uh, where I've been as a student before, uh, to celebrate 70 illustrious years of ISS. Uh, my name is Surabi. Uh, I'm an ISS alumnus. Uh, I, in fact, graduated last year. Um, I was part of the code and code, the COVID batch. <laughs> so we had a very different experience compared to previous uh, students who have been through the doors of ISS. Um, I'm from Mumbai and now I live and uh, work in Amsterdam. Um, but despite a tough year last year because of the COVID pandemic, um, I remember my time at ISS as intellectually stimulating, engaging, um, challenging at times. But I also had a chance to meet wonderful colleagues, uh, peers, professors, um, you know, from around the world. And I also made friends for life. So I really fondly cherish the memories that I have uh, from my time here, despite um, 
you know, a very uh, uh, tough year for a lot of us as students. Um, and I'm sure all of you in this room also have a similar story or fond ISS memory to share, uh, which we can share and you know, elaborate on later <laughs> during the drinks. Um, but that's what makes this moment and afternoon so very special. Over the next hour or so, we will go down the memory lane, as Inga mentioned as well, to reflect on the glorious history of ISS, to reflect on the past so that we can think about the future and make sense of the future. Um, I'll be joined by some esteemed guests throughout this hour. Um, Ed brings my sitting right next to me for that, um, in person and online, uh, who will share their fond memories of ISS um, from each of the ISS periods that we'll be talking about in more detail, as well as share their thoughts and reflections on the future. So sit back and get ready as we go on this time travel adventure. Um, and yeah, think about all of the great reflections you have from your time at ISS, and we'd love to hear some of your reflections towards the end of this program. So let's get started. Um, our first guest, as I mentioned, is Ed Springsma. He's the president of the executive board of Erasmus University Rotterdam. Um, hi, Ed. Welcome to the talk show, as we are calling it, and on this time travel adventure. Um, let's begin with where we are physically situated in this moment, right? We're in this beautiful city of The Hague in the ISS building. Um, and you're from the city of Hague, right? And I would love to hear more from you. What was it like growing up in this city and how it has changed over the years and how that has shaped the, the history and presence of ISS? Well, yes, very, very. Thanks for inviting me to the party, by the way, and, and congratulations with reaching this beautiful age. And uh, I'm sure the, the future uh, will be bright for, for, for this institution. Well, it's a coincidence indeed. I, I was born here. I, I must admit, I only spent the first 10 years of my life in The Hague. But I can quote the Hague writer Louis Couperes, who said, if I'm anything, I'm a Hagian. And I think this is true. After having lived as a, as, a, as a small boy in The Hague, I moved to many other parts, but never absorbed the other culture like I did here. So I still feel very much connected to The Hague. Um, I remember this building, but in a completely different capacity, uh, which was the head office of the Dutch Telephone and Telegraph Company, actually. And, uh, and the beautiful poem, which is written on, on the entrance, uh, which I, I, it's too beautiful to put it in English, but it's uh, a very nice poem, in fact. And um, if you th it's, it's about the spoken and the written word, which borrows as it, as we, from, from, from thought to fly around the world, which might very well apply also to this age of internet, I think. So, so in some sense, it's old, but it has some, some, some meaning in, in these days. As a boy, I, I, I think, well, of course, what do I remember? I remember my mother especially. I was a traditional family. My father worked. My mother took care of the children. Um, she either, well, in summer, she took me to the beaches, Scheveningen uh, or Kijkduin, and then we would come here in this part of town, especially in the Markstraat, to do shopping, Vey and Day. It no longer exists, but <laughs> I remember vividly Finally, losing my mother on the fifth floor of the department building, and this was a small. This was one of my first small crises in my youth. <laughs> How was the Hague? It was very different from nowadays. Of course, we've seen, and this is also true for Rotterdam, that the world also came to us. Of course, we saw the first stages. Of course, the uh, Wim will tell how this is connected to our own colonial past and how Indonesia was always very present in this town. So. The people uh, of color, and, and, and they spoke a special kind of Dutch. They had wonderful food. This I vividly remember, the Pasar Malem, which was always here in the Houtrusthalle. This, this was some vivid memories of how The Hague was always mm -hmm. a gateway, not like Rotterdam with the ships, but in terms of government uh, and, 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 and representatives here, of course, a gateway to the world. At the same time, of course, we didn't have the, 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 the colorfulness that we can find in, in large parts of The Hague nowadays. I was born in a tidal park, um, so I was very privileged. I, we had a huge garden, which made all my friends from school want to play uh, at, at our house and, and in our garden in the park. 
But um, now this is, this is the Moorweg. This is one of the areas where all of the world settled down. It's not unproblematic. At that time, it was a completely white neighborhood. It was middle class. Uh, and, well, you saw post-war growth there, I, I, I think. Uh, and, um, well, it's, it's quite a contrast to, to, to how you find The Hague now. And, of course, we now have all these high-rise buildings also. The Hague now has a hub. I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the ministries were all uh, low. I mean, in the new outleg where, where was uh, the Ministry of Education, it's a building like this one. And all these high-rise buildings, we, we didn't have them. Yeah. So, so my recollection is that out of which this wonderful institution grew was, was there, but we saw the world change and the Hague with it. It's, it's a very different, well, in some sense it's still like, it, it, it still has this flavor of being this, the seat of government and everything that has to do with it, embassies, mm -hmm. uh, etc. But at the same time, it has completely changed. I think like many parts of the Netherlands and the world, of course. Right. And how, how has this change uh, impacted ISS? Or how do you see that change shaping the ISS community, the institution? Yeah, well, this is, of course, on my part, also a bit of speculation because I've really become really familiar with ISS over the past two years that I'm president here. I, I lend some impression also in, in my past. I've also been rector at the University of Twente where we have another sale institute, ITC, and I think in this sense they are similar. They, they, they started out as a sort of capacity building service uh, to what we now call the Global South and, and, and was, was very pragmatic. And, and I would say that ISS, and, and this is also holds true for ITC, have become really academic communities, part of a larger university that actually are quite relevant uh, because of a globalized world, but also because of the world moving much more to our own doorstep, um, you provide a wonderful window to, let's say, the, the challenges, but also the advantages of, of bringing cultures and countries together. I, I think uh, in this respect, and, and I think what I've seen in both institutions happen is you do wonderful science. I mean, you, you, you got a Spinoza Award uh, this year. So you, you, I think, and this was, I imagine, not really what was intended at the foundation of ISS, but it has grown into something that combines academic excellence with a truly international outlook, which I would say is a usually relevant resource also for Erasmus University as a whole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, you mentioned um, you know, Rotterdam. How would you also compare the two cities? Because they are linked in, in a way. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, never ask somebody from The Hague what he thinks of Rotterdam. <laughs> <laughs> but I must admit, I, I, I tell you frankly, when I was young, we would have school trips to Rotterdam, and we would go to the zoo. And then we had the mouse tunnel, so the, the tunnel. Uh, which, uh, um, and, and then there was the Euromast, the tower there. And for the rest of it, to my young tastes, Rotterdam was slightly dull. <laughs> of course, it had tremendously suffered in the war, which was just, you know, uh, 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 10, 12 years ago when I was so, when I was born. So it was not a very beautiful city. It was a lot, they were working. The port was, of course, impressive, but it was not something that was very attractive to me as a boy from The Hague. I thought The Hague was far more beautiful and interesting. Now, I should do justice to it coming back. Actually, I came from Hamburg coming here, so another port city. I must say that, and of course, in the meantime, I had noticed that also Rotterdam changed a lot. But I must say it has turned into a very interesting and vibrant city. I would not like to, as someone from The Hague, make the comparison. I think they're both great cities. They're linked in a metropolitan area. I think they can have a lot of significance for each other. But I do say that Rotterdam has changed into a very dynamic and vibrant place where lots of interesting things are happening. And actually, I feel very privileged to, to be uh, uh, in, you know, uh, on the board of the Erasmus there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Ed, for uh, kicking us off and really locating us physically where we are in this moment and feel more grounded. So thanks so much for sharing your it was reflections. My, it was my pleasure. I think next up we have our anniversary film video. 
Um, post which I will ask uh, Wim to join us here on the, on the table. Um, so if you can have the video, please. Here we stand in front of ISS, an institute with a vivid history. Let's reconnect with our past. Imagine a large palace with rooms to spare, a small community in desperate need of space, and a queen willing to provide. Here in Palace Nordainda, the story of ISS begins. ISS was a really pioneering venture. Everyone lived together on the premises and had one common purpose, to create a better world. We were established to train civil servants and found our way in development studies. ISS started out as a small island, but new voices from all over the world arrived. Voices that changed the culture and how we interacted with the Global South. Soon the Institute began to burst at the seams. It desperately needed a new home, Hotel Wittebrug. It was exhilarating to be part of this new branch of research. The work on women and development was path-breaking and our focus became broader. ISS not only trained civil servants, but really began to train the trainers. With an ever-growing student population, even the hotel grew too small. We've now arrived in the present, the Korten Akada, where the heart is still the same, but the ways are different. Towards one world, united in our diversity. That's our motto. We now nurture the concept of co-creating excellence. By sharing knowledge and best practices, we learn lessons from each other. What do we see when we reconnect with the past, the present, and the future? ISS always wanted to create a fairer society for all. We have learned to embrace diversity, be more inclusive, and adapt to the dynamism of an ever-changing world. So we are back on our time travel adventure. Um, and we are going all the way back to the era of Palais Nord Aiden. Um, and with us, we have Wim van der Doel. Um, I apologize if I no, mispronounced okay. that. He's the Dean of Leiden Delft Erasmus University's Alliance and also a professor of history. Um, and we were having a really interesting conversation before the, uh, the program began, and you had some very interesting stories to share. Um, so tell us a bit as a historian, your perspective of that era of ISS. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for having me here. I wasn't born in 1952, uh, like uh, most of us, I think, in this, this room, but I'm, I'm trying to study it a little bit. So this institute was, uh, was, uh, was founded by all Dutch universities um, after uh, the uh, decolonization of the Dutch East Indies, and a lot of expertise was, was in the Netherlands waiting for something new to happen to, to, to be used, and at the same time, what we now call development cooperation or the technical assistance as it was called in 1949 was announced by President Truman and this came together and one person, Egbert de Vries, and Egbert de Vries is hanging here in this building, um, <laughs> at least as a painting, as a painting. Um, and he was the founder of, of, of ISS, the, the idea. So he wanted to have a new institution in which uh, social sciences were central because technical assistance was much, very much technology driven. So this idea of Truman and what the Americans did was very much, you know, the transfer of technology to what was then called uh, lesser developed countries. Um, and he thought, well, without the social sciences, you cannot really have a meaningful impact in, 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 in that part of the, the world. It, he was an engineer, agricultural engineer, and this was his experience from 20 years of trying to uh, change agriculture on the island of Java. Uh, so that was his background. And that was his lesson that if you do not have the, 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 the village, uh, the, the imam, 
uh, really working together with uh, people from the Agriculture Extension Service. He was a, found, a, a member of Nothing Works. So the social science was very important. So this was his idea. He left uh, for Washington to be a part of the World Bank, mm -hmm. um, but uh, he came back. Mm -hmm. Because the first, you, you, you talked about the glorious past of the ISS. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you a secret. Mm -hmm. Because the, four, the first four years of ISS were a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> were a complete disaster. Because the director, the first director, I won't mention his name, but he didn't want to move from Amsterdam to, uh, to The Hague, so he didn't live with the students. They were at the palace, yes, mm -hmm. that's true. But there was no staff, there was no academic staff. There were all those old professors from colonial days who came in for a course, for, for one lecture, and then they, 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 they moved back. Uh, back home to, to Leiden or Utrecht or Amsterdam or whatever place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was no real coherent program. And one of the first students actually uh, thought, well, that's very nice, this palace, uh, but I will write a PhD with Mr. Tinberg in Rotterdam, actually. So the first PhD from ISS is a PhD from the, uh, well, then uh, it was a different name, but from Rotterdam and with Jan Tinberg, and of course, famous. E uh, e economist, mm -hmm. but they didn't like what was going on in, 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 in the palace uh, and, and the courses, they didn't like it. And uh, actually there was this idea to shut it down, yeah, there were even in parliament or uh, uh, in, in the first chamber, so in the, in the, uh, um, there, was, there was this debate and, and they wanted to shut it down, it was much too costly and so on. But then, behind the, 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 the scenes, uh, people were talking to Egbert de Vries again, working in, in Washington for the World Bank, please, mm -hmm. please come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually came mm -hmm. uh, in uh, 1955 to, 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 to look at the situation. And he didn't like it, what mm -hmm. he saw, because it was not what he envisioned. Uh, and then he decided to come back and become the first rector uh, the real rector of, of, of the ISS in 1966, and then uh, it, uh, 96, uh, 1956. Mm -hmm. And that's in a way the restart of the ISS and the start of this glorious past. <laughs> but it took four years before it was really started. Right. And I think as a historian, you should be able to tell the good and the bad part of the history, right? So uh, I appreciate you, know, you sharing the disastrous part of the history as well. <laughs> um, but what did his homecoming signify for, for the, the, you know, the journey of ISS during those years and the current and perhaps even the future? Well, what, what Egbert de Vries did, he started to live at the palace. So he was a rector, not staying in Amsterdam or whatever place. He started to live with the students in, in, in the palace. And secondly, he made sure that the ISS had its own academic staff. So it was not staff anymore. Uh, lent from other universities at, at, at his own academic staff. And, and he created a new program, uh, a new two-year program, uh, well, development, uh, more, more, much more about development than about uh, uh, governance. So, uh, uh, so he, he was at the, at the start, really at the basis of, of, of the modern, I think, uh, ISS. He already started that in, in his term for 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, 56 to 66. So he's, he's been very in instrumental. I sometimes tell Inge that his place perhaps in the building, because now you can only see his, his picture uh, when you go down to the cellar. Uh, so uh, it should be a little bit more prominent, I think, uh, because without him, this, you would not have a, a party uh, mm -hmm. today. So that's an also a good reason to elevate him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Wim, for sharing about that very foundational part of uh, ISS history. And I really appreciate you also sharing the, the not so good parts of that. So thanks very much. Thank you. So next on our time travel adventure, we move to uh, the period of Hotel Witterberg. Um, unfortunately, we don't have uh, you know, folks who are sh sharing their reflections on this era in person here, live with us. Um, but I had an opportunity to uh, pre-record an interview with them, which we'll be playing out for you. Uh, for these interviews, I had a chance to have a conversation with uh, Professor Howard Nicholas and Professor Amrita Chachi. 
Um, and they'll be sharing more about their own reflections and fond memories from the time that they, um, from this period of ISS, and also what it meant for them as, as uh, a professional, but also for the wider ISS community. So if you can take a look at the videos. Uh, my name is Howard Nicholas. I, in my history at the ISS, I tried to get everybody to call me Howard. You know, no titles, nothing. Um, I joined the ISS in 1981 in October, and I formally retired in 2020 December. One of the, my recollections of the Vitebrook was it was very informal. Everything was very informal. So we had there. Um, a coffee bar mm -hmm. where large numbers of people had to pass through the coffee bar to get to their rooms. Mm -hmm. And then we had lots of lounging chairs in the coffee bar. And so people would be loitering there with intent, intent to impede anyone else's progress to their rooms. And so they would call you and then you'd get into a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you'd sit there for about half an hour, an hour. If you see some of your students going by, you drag them as well. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very informal setup. And to be frank, we didn't have that much teaching pressure either because we had more allowances for each course that we ran. And we had much more time for students. Mm -hmm. and, and Students really appreciated that because, uh, you know, we would even go to the pub with them right. uh, and have drinks uh, while we were supposed to be having a workshop or a tutorial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then those tutorials would last for, formally you're supposed to have it for an hour, but could go on for two and a half hours. Then someone would say, oh, I can cook for you. Or, Let's go and eat something. And then, you know, I always ended up going home very late mm -hmm. you know, because we would be together with the students for long periods of time and lots of arguments, lots of debates. But the learning was incredible. Quite a number of projects where anyone who was involved had to actually go to a country mm -hmm. and work in the country. Right. So there was always some money where, you know, it's not just a fleeting visit. You had to stay there for many years. Right. right. So as soon as I had this opportunity and uh, perfectly for me, it was Sri Lanka that uh, the opportunity came, uh, then I jumped at it because one thing that impressed me about my colleagues was how knowledgeable they were about the intimate details of various countries, you know. So when I would discuss something academically, then they would uh, argue with me and say, no, no, this is not actually how things work. You know, this is how it really works. You might be reading the data this way, mm -hmm. but actually this is the real world. And so I was always interested to get that experience. Uh, and I was encouraged to do so by uh, at least one of my colleagues who said that you, I know it's an inconvenience for you, Howard, but you will not, you don't realize how much you will benefit from that experience and he was perfectly correct uh, uh, i benefited immensely i went to sri lanka to do two projects in fact uh, two projects materialized at the same time one was to set up an institute of policy studies mm -hmm. uh, for the ministry of finance the minister was uh, an old family friend mm -hmm. So that's how that one came about. And the second one was to develop a postgraduate department uh, for the economics department. Mm -hmm. And they wanted that uh, 
as a way in which they could raise the living standards of <laughs> academics working at Colombo University. I'm Amrita Chachi. I was associate professor at the ISS in um, gender, labor, poverty studies, and social policy. Uh, I did my MPhil, MA MPhil at Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi, in India. I joined the ISS in 1983 as a lecturer in the Women and Development Program, as it was known at that time. Uh, you know, the Women and Development Program had just become a full MA specialization, and we were still fighting for recognition as a legitimate field of study. So it was a very exciting time. I had come just to be there here for one or two years, but I ended up staying for years. <laughs> when I joined the ISS, it had just shifted from the palace to hotel. And looking back, really, there was a kind of old world charm to the building. Um, the, and the whole atmosphere. Um, there were sofas in every corner inviting you to come and sit and chat. So you'd often find groups of students and staff sitting there. There were chandeliers in the common room. <laughs> um, and there was a kind of cozy ambiance. Um, and even though we had a larger number of participants uh, at that time than today, um, most of them were mid-career professionals. So they came with a wealth of experience and engagement with development in the field. So this made for really a mutual learning process, as well as closeness between staff and students. Um, oh, I, I want to tell you about one annual event that we used to have in that era um, on March 8th, International Women's Day. All the men of the Institute, staff, students, administrative staff, all the men cooked for all the women. And there was much fun, laughter, good food. And also a statement was being made. Mm -hmm. um, some of that kind of thing, they're, they're wonderful events that take place at the ISS in later years, but somehow the kind of informal togetherness that happened through these kind of events. There used to be a, a cricket match every year, staff versus students. Again, we haven't had that kind of thing uh, in later years. I see that period as one where ISS really moved away more strongly from its initial colonial project of training administrators, you know, and more towards an international development studies institution with research teaching policy. We drew in people from NGOs, from women's organizations, social movements, in addition to civil servants, you know, um, and uh, along with a kind of mainstream development studies that was taught at the ISS, we also had a more radical, critical stream of development studies and a number of staff members were scholar activists who carried their commitment into their teaching and research. Um, this was reflected, for instance, in the fact that ISS gave refuge and hosted a number of political exiles mm. from national liberation movements of that time, especially from Africa.
I would like to thank Howard and Amrita again for uh, their time and for their reflections. And if they're watching us online, thanks very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to the reflections as well. Um, and I hope you're also enjoying the time travel adventure so far. We are moving closer to the present. But before we go to uh, the next period of ISS, uh, we have another performance by the lovely ISS music band. The song is called uh, Catholic Country, but it doesn't have any biblical references. It's just a love song. Catholic country, got my back on the carpet and my feet to the ceiling to get the blood flowing to numb the pain I'm feeling. The more I know about you, the more I know I want you, the less I care about you. Say before I found you, the more I know about you, the more I know I want you, the less I care about you. Say before I found you. Garden, past the forest of conscience, on a curvy road. With every hour of passing, I started to believe in bubble life. Been dreaming, had to float on the ceiling.
thanks Abhimanyu, Daniel, Nicholas, and Carolyn. Um, we'll come back to you again for another music interlude. But now we continue our journey to uh, the next and the current period in uh, the history of ISS, and that's period uh, Kortanikad. Um, and if I can invite Angelica on the stage here. Um, Angelica is also an ISS alumnus, so mm -hmm. great to have you here with me. Um, she graduated in 2018, uh, is from Colombia, and mm -hmm. currently works with Oxfam Novib. Yes. Um, welcome, Angelica. Um, let me ask you about some of your fond memories of your time at ISS and what that signified you for, um, to you as a, a student, mm -hmm. as part of ISS community, what that time meant for you. Um, okay, no, thank you for inviting me. To be honest, when I was walking uh, from the office towards ISS, I was feeling a bit nervous, and I was thinking like, oh my God, I don't have my notes, I don't have talking points, I didn't prepare. It's like, what if I am not that clever? What if I forget the right English word to mention that because I am uh, more sharp in Spanish? Something like that, I was a bit panicking, but then I said, Listen, this is my people. It's just ISS community and it's my friends, the teachers that I admire, Rosalba, Wendy, Bernie. It's the people that I know, the people that uh, know me, and this is it. This is the most important. I don't know how, but ISS has this potentiality and this impressive power of making everyone feel like at home. We were all different. We were all um, carrying different backgrounds, histories, cultural beliefs, whatever. But we all felt that we had a place, and this was the most important thing. And I'm speaking about myself because I felt like that, but we can ask, and everyone, I would say that 90% of the people who are here could relate. Mm -hmm. and, and that's difficult to achieve. I don't know how we all do it, because mm -hmm. it's not only the staff, it's not only uh, professors, but it's all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a student during that time, and you know, you studied in this particular building, mm -hmm. right? Do you have any specific memories from that time that you know have you cherish or have stayed with you um, even after you have left um, ISS formally as a student? Yeah, I think that the um, International Day is amazing. We do it usually in December, if I'm not mistaken, and winter is starting, so we are feeling a bit blue, but. Everyone um, come together and we share songs, we dance, we try different food. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, the butterfly bar, fond memories of the butterfly yes. bar, of course. Um, preparing the RP, studying together, coming to a library mm -hmm. and sharing the struggle and telling to the other, yeah, it's okay, <laughs> we will graduate. It will happen. So I think that memories are, I, I could say, one memory per each day that we were here. Yeah. And, you know, as we look forward into the future, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on, you know, how do you see ISS growing and evolving in the next coming years? And that's a question we have posed to all of our audience as well. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to know more about what you think. I think that ISS should continue being a safe space for all of us and a safe space for having tough conversations and to question ourselves, to question what is the worldview that we are sharing to the world. Mm -hmm. Then uh, to continue with the possibility of unlearn and then learn again from each other. I think that uh, it comes from the lectures but also uh, from you, from everyone who is here. So we should keep being critical citizens and we should keep having our face um, in front of what is happening in the world because academia, I would say, that should be linked to reflection. And it's academia linked to action mm -hmm. and doing something better with this world that needs all of us so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's really, really interesting. And thanks so much for sharing that, Anelka. We also had another colleague from this uh, period who couldn't join us in person here today, 
but I had a chance to chat with uh, Elizabeth. She's also a former ISIS uh, uh, alumnus, um, and she's currently a professor at the LSE uh, in London. Um, and yeah, we, we asked Eliza also about um, what, you know, if she had any fond memories from this time and how she reflects on the future in the coming year. So if you can have her video, please. My name is Eliza Ngutuku and I am working at the London School of Economics and Political Science as a researcher and um, of course an alumni of ISS. I went to the ISS in the year 2004 for my master's degree in women and gender development and again I went back in the year two, 20, uh, 2015 for my master's so I'm um, two years uh, post my graduation in the ISS. So when I came to the ISS in 2004 to do my, 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 my course in women gender development, which is not something I'd planned. My husband happened to be schooling at uh, Dev Taichi and his professor told him, you know, you can tell your wife to come and do a degree in the ISS uh, in women gender development. So a professor who was not in the ISS chose my course for me and I've never regretted. So that was the ISS that was in the mouth of professors. I remember, uh, we we never used to have the canvas and the model as we used to have now so we used to all of us like queue by the pigeon holes when the teacher the lecturer told us you know the results are out so there was no way that you were able to hide your grade because either you tell your colleague or then you 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 talk you know you show it in your face so i think it was also something there was some sense of solidarity also when we were also going to to look for our results but but then um different memories of also you know coming from different places and i remember i was the editor of the newsletter after after five uh, after nine months my colleagues were, were reflecting on what has happened and i remember we reflected about the parties in the iss that we were uh, you know eating crepes and we were eating you know uh, taking you know juices and i remember one of my colleagues from 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 ghana tango he said in africa when you go for parties and you tell your wife don't don't count me but then when we go for parties you know you go and cook uh, your yam fufu at night so and that was that was those were the things that kept us moving on you know moving and also encouraging each other and, and just feeling like you know we are ourselves there, there was there was no space for being something else but just ourselves and I think that is what uh, ISS is and even when I was doing my PhD that that is how I felt about it and I I hope that 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 feeling that you can just just bring yourself, you know, despite your difference. You can bring your jokes, you can bring your humor, you can bring your accent, you can bring your your background, then can, can also continue as we, we move forward in, in the ISS. In terms of the ISS that, that we all knew and, and 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 this place where we were mentored, where we were told to, to dream to engage with our countries, with our, with, with our organizations, and with, with, the, with the way development was imagined. So I think that uh, that is one of the things I would maybe also um, imagine needs to, to continue also and where everybody else feels I've not just come here because I'm going back to look for a job, but I'm come here as an equal in, in knowledge production and we can be able to engage. But also coming to, to the way I've also seen uh, ISS also develop in terms of also enabling people uh, you know, from different places and like the lizards of our world then to come is we, most of us, we got scholarships to come and study in the ISS. But increasingly, maybe in the last five years or four, when I was doing my PhD, I also observed that, you know, it was sometimes, uh, you know, we had less and less people participating from Africa, I would say maybe from Kenya in particular. And I think most of it is because we've maybe over relied at some point with funding from the Dutch government. And now with some countries, is being seen as you know being uh, emerging countries then we don't have any more of, of, of learners coming from those uh, places so I would say if we're really also interested in engaging in epistemic uh, the epistemic injustices in development then we also have maybe to rethink how we are also going to ensure that it is not maybe only one or two 
uh, students from Africa who are able to, to afford or from Asia. Uh, but then, you know, we also have like maybe targeted funding streams. And I think we can also draw from our very rich alumni base. Uh, maybe I would say, if possible, get like somebody or maybe an office that is dedicated to philanthropy. I've seen it in other contexts and also where I work, where there are also maybe country targeted, region targeted scholarships, so that we don't also go with a wave that, you know, uh, education is only for them that can, can pay. So I think we can get that ISS that maybe was in the mouth of everyone mm -hmm. uh, by also en en enhancing that funding. Well, thanks again, Angelica, and Thank also you. Elizabeth, if she's watching us online, for sharing your reflections on, on our current period. Um, and yeah, if you can take your seat and I'll open up Thank this you. discussion for yeah. the, the audience. So we have now come at an uh, end of our time travel uh, adventure. I hope you all uh, had a blast and enjoyed. Um, I would like to open this discussion up now, I think as Inga had mentioned in, in her inaugural speech. Um, we would love to hear from, from some of you about uh, the question that was posed on your cards, uh, on your seats, which is, what does the future of ISS look like in 10 years? Um, and we will have Sarah, I think, uh, with the mic uh, here in the room. So if, you know, if anyone would like to share your, your thoughts or reflections um, on this question, please go ahead. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Aditya Barde. I'm the Director General of NAFIC, the neighbor. And I really congratulate you, Inge, and of course the board of the executive board of Erasmus University and all the people in, gathered in this room. We think, we as we are also 70 years, first of all, we would really like you to have at least another 70 years as being the most innovative research and teaching institute in uh, studies. Um, Inge, you and I shared the, uh, the opportunity to go to Indonesia this summer. And we talked a lot about South-South cooperation and us from the North being um, having a chance to it being in the middle of this south south cooperation so what i wish for the iss is that, is that it will have some more locations with south south research and teaching for the future and that we from the hague blend in and uh, make new innovative stories in research and teaching and I'm very sure that you as a, a world community, a global community, can do so. And I'm really looking forward to working with you in, for the next 70 years. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have time for one last reflection, if someone would like to share something. Okay. Oh, yours also me. Yes. So I, I'm just thinking about what Egbert de Vries, sort of real founder of this institution, would have thought of today, and I think he would be very happy. Uh, and what he would say about I don't know, of course, but I'm just thinking. Uh, so what he would uh, wish the ISS uh, to 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 be in the next ten years, I think his vision was that it should be academically excellent. So one, one thing he really pushed was this academic excellence. Secondly, he also already hired uh, staff from what you call the South. Huh? So he wanted to have a very diverse uh, group of, uh, of, uh, of teachers. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, so this, is this entire notion of co-creation he was very much in favor of. And he also realized that what we, you were dealing with were wicked problems. So wicked problems you cannot solve just like in a two-year course. So this is something you have to work on for a long period, mm -hmm. also with your alumni. So really bring back the alumni. So he was actually very modern. Huh? So he was a very modern uh, person, uh, uh, and, and he would love, I think, this day. If he would be alive, he would, he would be, be very happy, I think, what the ISS had become. And he would wish you again the next 10 years uh, in the same fashion as it has been now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. I think we are reaching the end of the, the afternoon uh, and this event. 
Uh, before I hand it over to Inga to do the final vote of thanks, I um, would invite the band for another quick music interlude. Closure. So um, I'm not going to try to summarize the afternoon, but I think it has been so rich. Mm -hmm. And what I keep in mind is that we have been doing this so much together, all of us. But I also will remind very much, and that also has touched me, I realize, is that how there are also well-wishers for ISS. So I feel that very strongly to be in Erasmus, but also the Nuffet close by, the booth, as we say it, uh, WIM, LDE, we are really so much integrated in a network. And I think that's different from when we were not part of Erasmus University. So that, that has been touching me. Um, and yeah, WIM, the first four years were 
disastrous. <laughs> so I will remember that if we have less good times <laughs> and we have some problems, he said, no, 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 but it's not as bad as the first four years. <laughs> so thank you very much. I want to thank all of you. And let me just mention, of course, the speakers, Ed and Wim, Howard, Amrita, Elizabeth and Angelica. Thank you very much. The band members, of course, very much. <laughs> Thank you for that. Interviewer Sorabi, of course. Thank you so much. And then, as you could make out, there are a lot of people behind the screens as well. And I just mentioned a couple of them, but there have been many more. Femke, Marie-Louise and Sarah uh, of ISS. And as you will have noticed, we have an excellent team that has supported us. And that's the team of uh, Loida, if I can say it like that. Loida, Erik, Omar, Evgeny, Pamela, Joya. So thank you so much <laughs> for making this a very beautiful event. Um, we have some flowers for the speakers. We'll do that uh, later. But I want to invite you now. Um, we're breaking up here. Maybe one thing still to say, those who are on live stream and who left the room, uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, and thank you also for warning that there was the CO2 level was too high. Um, but thank you for doing that and, and watching us online uh, further. Um, yeah, what rest me? invite you to the atrium. We still have the flowers, and maybe, Sarah, you can help me to give the flowers to people. We'll do that. Uh, we have also two special presents, and that's for Ed and for Annalyn. It's a small plate that we actually have uh, given to people when we were 10 years at the Erasmus University, and it has the poem of the building on top of it. So we'll give that to you specifically for Erasmus University. Glad to invite you for the drinks. Be aware that will be after that a buffet dinner. And after that, we have a dancing event. And the group of who are 50 years here, they already said, you, I think, you said, I'm going to take the lead in the dancing. So <laughs> we're waiting for that. Uh, thank you very much. And um, enjoy, enjoy me. Up later, don't forget to leave your card in the ballot box there with your ideas for the future. We already heard quite a lot of them, and um, thank you very much. And also, thank you for those online the speakers, uh, Howard, Amrita, uh, Elizabeth. <laughs> it's done. <laughs>